What does under the altar mean? Well, an altar in the context of this quote means heaven or the heavenly mindset. So in terms of the last judgment, this is talking about people who were in the afterlife and they were good, but they weren't in heaven yet. Under the altar symbolizes a lower earth where the inhabitants were protected by the Lord. An altar symbolizes worship of the Lord out of the goodness of love. The souls of those who had been slain mean here symbolically not martyrs, but people who were hated, treated with scorn, and expelled by the evil in the world of spirits, and who could be led astray by followers of the dragon and by heretics. Followers of the dragon means people caught up in that faith alone doctrine. If you want to know more about that, take a look at our show, The Last Judgment. But what about that phrase, a lower earth? So as we said earlier, the spiritual world is made up of three major divisions heaven, hell, and then the world of spirits. But there's an additional zone that Swedenborg calls the lower earth. In our diagram, we're just showing one place, but it seems like there's a variety of lower earth regions scattered around. So since all these levels are interconnected, goodness in the world of spirits is supposed to act as the foundation for heaven. But in the times leading up to the last judgment, goodness in the world of spirits was disintegrating. It's due to all the religious corruption coming from earth into the afterlife. Good people were becoming confused by these leaders who seemed like they were holy and sincere, yet they had found ways to hide their corruption and manipulate people. When the time came for God to reveal the true nature of everyone in the world of spirits, the ugliness and hypocrisy of these false teachers and their followers was exposed. This place had become dangerous. So now everyone who was devoted to God and trying to lead a good life had to be hidden and protected. So they were brought down into the lower earth. And this became a temporary safe haven for these people. Since the souls were under the altar, it is apparent that they were being protected by the Lord. For the Lord protects all people who have lived some life of charity to keep them from being harmed by the evil. And after the last judgment, when the evil had been removed, they are released from their asylums and elevated into heaven. Hidden away in the lower earth, the goodness of these people could form a foundation for heaven while the world of spirits was such a mess, so they could live there in peace and safety. But that's not the only function of this lower earth environment. The lower earth is also a place for vastation or purification of the spirit. The people who still have negativity to work through come here where they're surrounded by hell and yet protected from hell. Evil spirits actually can't capture these people, but they can stir up the people's own negativity so it can be exposed, clearly seen, and then rejected. And we actually go through this same thing on Earth. Can't we sometimes feel like we're in the pit, surrounded by negative thoughts and feelings? This is actually what Swedenborg calls temptation or spiritual crises, which we talked about in this show. Genuine temptation only happens when there's goodness in us and then hell wants to attack it. And though we feel in distress, we're actually being protected through the process. And what's happening is our own false ideas and negative emotions are being stirred up so that they can be exposed and then let go. When we come into spiritual trials, we come into the company of spirits devoted to falsity, who tie up our thoughts and hold them bound in prison, so to speak. They constantly pour in arguments against the truth we believe and call out the evil actions of our life. But the Lord continually protects us by flowing in from an inner level, and in this way keeps us constantly resisting. This is what spiritual temptations are like. 